Welcome to Scott Allen Miller's Camera Cafe. On our last episode, I answered the question of what camera body would I recommend if someone was looking to get into serious wildlife photography, but not looking to go all the way to professional photography. And our recommendation here on the cafe was the Olympus or OM Systems OMD EM1 Mark two, which at the time I showed. I can't show you that one today because we are filming on that camera itself and I only have one of them. It is an excellent camera that I recommend a lot and that I use a lot. It is a really wonderful camera. That the camera body is that one gives us a starting point for the conversation, but we also need something more, which is obviously lenses. So that's the next step of the conversation. So we're gonna talk about the Emswico or Olympus native lenses available that make sense for wildlife photography for this system. Before we get started, a couple things. One, we're only gonna look at the native lenses from Olympus themselves, known as Mzuiko, as a lens maker. Uh, there are third-party lenses, such as from Leica, that you could also get and use with the system. We'll talk about those in another time. This is an interchangeable lens camera, so you may want a number of lenses. We're only gonna look at those that seem to make sense for wildlife photography. This is a micro four thirds system, meaning it has a two to one crop factor. What that means is that when we're looking at focal length, let's say we say a 50 millimeter focal length in micro four thirds in full frame, such as a Canon R6 or a Sony A7S III or a uh, Nikon Z9, that would be the equivalent of a 100 millimeter focal length. So keep that in mind that everything is gonna be a halved number as far as the equivalent wide angle or telephoto uh, focal length. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but it means when we say something is a 300 millimeter here, that's the equivalent of a 600 millimeter, which is a really long telephoto. So sometimes those low numbers make it sound like, oh, that's not that long, and they're quite long. Uh, we're thinking of primarily normal wildlife photography. We're assuming you're gonna be some distance away. If you're gonna be really close, maybe you need something else. We're looking at kind of general purpose. You can kind of follow along. Now, Olympus has three main lines of lenses. It has an everyday line that are very inexpensive and are meant for casual amateur photographers. These can be great choices. Olympus makes excellent glass. These are pretty affordable. They have a middle tier called the premium lenses. They're not always labeled that, but it's easy to see which ones they are. These lenses are uh, a bit more expensive than the uh, casual everyday lenses. The everyday lenses, are almost always zooms. Finding a prime in that range is very rare if it will ever happen. The premium lenses are essentially always primes and also typically come in both black and silver, which is just a nice touch. They tend to be very fast. The pro line tends to be even faster than those, higher optical quality, a more rugged build, much more expensive, typically larger and heavier, and most importantly, for many of us, weatherproofed. The everyday and the premium lenses are not weatherproof. They are still rather rugged and you can use them in a variety of circumstances, but the pro lenses are famous for being able to be paired with the weatherproof body and being able to be used in extreme weather conditions such as rain and snow without causing any damage. So if you're doing a lot of wildlife or you're outside and you're in adverse weather conditions, the pro lenses may make a difference simply for that reason. And the Olympus, that is a strong point for them. Their weatherproofing, their ruggedness is one of, if not the best. That said, let's get started. Now I have notes because there are 13 lenses that fall into this category. So we have a lot to talk about. And you're only gonna want one or two, especially starting out. Over time, you may accumulate more lenses. Of course, we all do. I have about 10 for my current system. Uh, I also have two camera bodies and hope to get more. Let's start with the premiums. This is the middle tier because there's two items and they are probably the least interesting on the list. One is the Prime 45 millimeter. This is one that I use all the time. It is a 45 millimeter F 1.8 and cost $400. Now, all the prices I'm gonna give here are list new. Uh, in many cases, especially if you're just getting started with wildlife photography, you're gonna to wanna to go with a used lens. Look at vendors like KEH and MPB who have some amazing deals and do a really good job of making sure that you're getting quality glass, even though it is used, that can save you an awful lot of money and is a great way to get started. Later, if you're starting to buy new camera bodies and have a lot of uh, expenditures that you're okay with, then getting new lenses absolutely is fine too. But for me, I tend to buy used. 
it really does provide a great value and I use both of those vendors. I'm not affiliated with either, so you can't use any affiliate links below to purchase from any at this time, but I do my shopping with them and I have no problem promoting them because they've done such a great job. So the 45 millimeter f1.8 at $400, excellent choice, but 45 millimeters is only 90 millimeters equivalent in uh, full frame, which is not a really long telephoto. It's a very short telephoto. It can be useful if you're doing large subjects that are fairly near to you. But if you're doing something very far away, that's not gonna work. The 45 millimeter is typically used as a portraiture lens and it is excellent. I have it myself and I love the lens. It is often listed as a favorite along with the 17 millimeter famous for its being a travel lens for this system. The other premium prime lens that we want to look at is the 75 millimeter, rumored to be a Sigma copy, uh, also at f1.8 and $700. This one also has a great reputation for image quality. And at 75 millimeters, we get a much longer length. That's the equivalent of 150. And so that's a mid-range telephoto and really, really good. So if you're in a lot of cases, that would actually, you could just use that one. If you're okay without the weatherproofing, it is affordable, it has a good length, and it gets great image quality, and it's so fast that there's a lot of things that that's gonna work great for. Now, neither, none, I should say, of the, of the premium lenses, I'm only looking at two here, but the whole line does not have image stabilization in the lenses. So you just know if you're going for that line, you're not gonna get image stabilization. It's often fine, especially at these super fast primes. They are light and fast. That makes them pretty easy to hold, and you still have in-body image stabilization in your Olympus EM one Mark II or Mark III or OM-1 if you're going with that premium line and that can make up for not having stabilization in the lens. Obviously, both is often ideal. Now, let's look at the everyday lenses. This is going down to the cheaper ones, but these are zooms. So these are what you're much more likely to use in wildlife photography. First up is the, there's two, these are the main wildlife lenses. So this is where we're getting to the bread and butter. The 75 to 300 millimeter F 4.8 to 6.7 Mark II is probably your, your best starter lens for this system. And new is only $550. At 75 to 300, this is a really good focal range. You've got 75 millimeter, which is the equivalent of 150 again, up to 300, which is really long. It's the equivalent of a 600. That gives you pretty much everything you would usefully use in wildlife uh, telephotos. It doesn't give you anything really short, but it does give you a really good range at a very, very good Price. Now, that is a pretty slow lens and it does not have a consistent aperture, which makes it a little bit less ideal for video, but we're really talking about photography in this particular video. So this is a really strong lens. Just be aware, no image stabilization uh, and, and a relatively slow lens. And it's relatively, at that length, your in-body image stabilization is gonna be really critical and it's going to be often hard to hold it steady. The other one in this very likely to be your first lens category is the 100 to 400 millimeter F5 to 6.3 image stabilized. This one is a little bit longer. You do lose a little bit of that flexibility on the short throw, but 400 millimeters as the long telephoto is really long. This is an excellent range if you know you're going to have to reach a little bit uh, to get your subject. The 5.0 is not quite as fast as the other lens, but 400 millimeters at 6.3 is pretty respectable. Still a little bit slow, but way faster than the 300 millimeter at 6.7. This is, this is a pretty useful lens and with the image stabilization your opportunity to be able to handhold that even at pretty long lengths is pretty good the downside fifteen hundred dollars almost three times the price of the 75 to 300 so it can be a pretty difficult decision but this is the more premium lens for sure also be aware it is a lot heavier both of these lenses come highly recommended and heavily tested by Casey over at Camera Conspiracies. So if you're here on YouTube and you want to check them out, look up Camera Conspiracies. Uh, Casey does a lot of reviews of this camera and these lenses for wildlife videography, not photography. So his recommendations are slightly different and there's a lot of factors that he's looking at because he wants slow-mo and different types of autofocus than you would have for just photography, which we're looking at here. In the really affordable range is the 40 to 150 millimeter f4 to 5.6 r. This is a really middle of the road range. It does not have anything in the in the wide or even uh, mid range. 40 is like the absolute minimum for telephoto. That's a super short telephoto at 80 equivalent and goes up to 150 or 300 equivalent. F4 to 5.6 is pretty slow, but what's really nice about this lens is just that it's a very comfortable range. So if you don't need a long throw, this is has a, a nice range that you can get pretty close, pretty far. It's only $200 new. That's incredible 
a lot of people will go for that lens simply because it is so cheap. Um, no special features, no weatherproofing, definitely an everyday lens, but it, it is an option and very affordable if you're looking to get it, especially a used system, this is a great way to get in. Uh, we then have the 12 to 200 millimeter f3.5 to 6.3. This is a really nice range lens that goes from super wide, 12 is crazy wide, 200 is pretty long. So this is a huge optical range on this and the speed is not terrible. On the wide end, 3.5 is completely respectable and the long end, 6.3 is very slow. So somewhere it starts getting to be a pretty slow lens. It is $1,000 with no image stabilization and no weatherproofing. So it's a little bit pricey, but boy, is that range nice. That means you can do absolutely anything from a range perspective with this lens. You're never going to be caught with, oh, I can't reach it. It's too far away. Oh, I need to do something wide. I don't have that. You have everything in one lens at a price you can probably afford. It's not that fast. That's the big drawback or weatherproofed. We also have the 12, I'm sorry, the 14 to 150 millimeter F4 to 5.6 Mark II. This is a very similar lens to the one we just mentioned, but with a little bit less on either end. Instead of starting at a wide of 12, it's wide is only 14. Instead of going to a long of 200, it's a long of only 150. It's not quite as fast on the slow on the wide end, but it's slightly faster on the long end. The big deal, only $650. That can make it a really good choice for a general purpose lens that's a bit more affordable. And being the Mark II with the 5.6 being as slow as it gets, not too bad. That wraps up our everyday lenses. And for most beginners, those are the lenses you're gonna be looking at. But we're now gonna move on to the pros. These tend to be the fastest and they're weatherproofed. They often come with better image quality and other advantages. So let's look at those. First of all, the Prime 300 millimeter F4.0 imaged stabilized. This one is a legend in Olympus circles. It is very good for wildlife photography where you need that long throw of the 600 millimeter equivalent. With the image stabilization and the fast f4 it does a great job at being able to capture still images of things in motion or low light situations however it is a large lens it is heavy and it is three thousand dollars so you're generally only going to be looking at that monster when you are going professional or very close to it to justify that kind of expenditure on a single prime lens that is really only used for wildlife photography in most cases or sports also great for sports and that's where a lot of people will purchase that also in the pro lineup is the 40 to 150. You'll notice we had a 40 to 150 everyday lens. It was super cheap at $200. This one has a flat F4 and is weatherproof. So it's a fast lens instead of a slow one. It is weatherproofed instead of not weatherproofed. It still has that really handy 40 to 150 range. I like that a lot if this is like your only lens and you're just kind of playing around with wildlife photography. You don't need that huge reach. 300 millimeter equivalent is good enough for you. $900. Getting into a pro lens at $900 with that really good range is pretty useful. So that may be something you really like, uh, depending on what you need to be able to reach to. Uh, next up in the pro line, there is another 40 to 150. So this matches the one that we just talked about, but it's one stop faster. Otherwise, all the specs are the same. Instead of an F4, it's an F2.8. Instead of $900, we're jumping to $1,500. So there are three lenses from Olympus, all with the same 40 to 150 at $200, $900, and $1,500. Definitely at f2.8, you're getting into a very pro lens that is extremely fast for a zoom, and it's flat throughout the range. So this is a very nice lens, really flexible. Similarly, there is the uh, 12 to 100 f4 imaged stabilized lens. I really like this one because 12 is the wide end that I like to have. 100 is not very long. That is still a short telephoto, but it's on the long end of short with a 200 millimeter equivalent. You can do an awful lot with that. 12 to 100 is a really great range. It's not as good as the 12 to 200 that we saw for $1,000 in the uh, everyday range, but that was as slow as a 6.3. This is a 4.0 and it's image stabilized. This is a really, really great all purpose lens. Amazing image quality, optical quality. It is fast. The image stabilization gives you so many options that you don't have with other things. It is a pro, so it is a it is weatherproofed, really great quality, build quality across the entire range. It is $1,400. The really nice thing about it is that it is the lens we are recording this show on today. Most of the recording that we do here is on the EM1 Mark II with the 12 to 100 f4 image stabilized. Pro. I love this lens. It really covers the bases for me. I get really wide so I can do things like vlogging on it. I can do all the normal uh, nifty 50 range mid-range stuff all the way up to a short telephoto that's 
all of the short telephoto range is covered in there. It does just an excellent job all in one lens. I have lots of other lenses. A lot of my others are primes though. This is my one zoom. I don't do wildlife, so I don't have some of those longer lenses. I've considered it and I may at some point get one, especially if this becomes popular on the channel, but that is, that is the lens that I am using right now. Heavily recommended, but not necessarily for wildlife. But if you're looking for that general purpose, one amazing lens for this system, that is the one. Now, also in the Pro is another 45 millimeter, but instead of an F 1.8, it is an F 1.2, and it is weatherproof. But instead of $400, it jumps to $1,400. So this is a $1,000 premium to get that less than one stop improvement on speed and the weatherproofing. It is also a heavier lens. So uh, it is generally considered a higher quality, like you're gonna get better optical quality from this, but the 1.8 is already an excellent optical quality lens. So jumping to the Pro on this can be a pretty tough call unless you are a highly paid professional, at which point it does not matter. And again, that is a very short telephoto, uh, telephoto prime for wildlife. So it's gonna be very rare that a 45 millimeter is gonna work for you, even though it's a 90 millimeter equivalent. Our last lens, is a 150 to 400 Pro. Now, remember we had a 75 to 300 and a 100 to 400 in everyday lenses. This is a 150, so a little bit longer on the wide end to 400 matching the, the longest of the long ends of those zooms at a consistent F 4.5. It has a built-in teleconverter of 1.25. Not 100% sure how that plays in. It is image stabilized as you need at that length it is a pro lens, so it is weatherproof. So this is a fast, image stabilized, really long, good range of zoom, but the price is $7,500. This is a large, really heavy lens. It's gonna be very rare that anyone short of a complete wildlife professional or sports professional is going to consider a lens like this. So that is the Olympus lens lineup, all 13 lenses that they have that seem appropriate for different types of wildlife photography. Hopefully you can find a few in this range that are both within your budget and meet your wildlife goals. In general, I'm gonna say the 75 to 300 is the most appropriate lens often used for the majority of people who are looking at getting into wildlife photography. If you're very serious about it, going for the everyday 100 to 400 with the image stabilization may easily be worth the upgrade. Be aware it is much heavier, so you're gonna be using it a little bit differently and it is not weatherproofed, but it is image stabilized. It is a great lens, really good option. And you probably would pair that either with a short zoom that handles your more general purpose photography or a prime or two to cover those bases instead. But one way or another, you're gonna to wanna to cover something shorter because 100 is simply too long for everyday photography. In many cases, you would end up using two cameras in the field rather than one because you don't wanna be changing lenses out in the field. So if you're going into the field with only one lens, you're gonna want something that has a decent amount of range and only you can decide what kind of photography you're willing to give up in order to get other benefits such as low cost or great reach. Um, but what a lot of photographers will do to avoid swapping lenses in the field is have one camera with a moderate zoom and another with a really long telephoto or one with a great telephoto reach that is long, like the 100 to 400, and then another like the 12 to 100 like I'm using here. So you can go between the two cameras, everything from 12 to 400 and not ever have to be in a situation where you don't have a length that you need, but you don't have to open up your camera and expose the lens back uh, uh, optics or the sensor to the elements because when you're doing nature photography or wildlife photography, there's a really good chance that you're gonna be in adverse conditions. It could be rain, dust, who knows, anything could be going on. You need the flexibility of not having to open your camera. Lots of good options here. Olympus makes really good optics. I love their optics. It's actually one of the reasons that I choose the system. I love how their lenses look and I like the third party range as well. For wildlife, the Olympus and the Leica are going to be your main ones. We will look at the Leica in another episode, but the if you're going with Olympus, you probably want the Olympus lenses at least to get started. And especially if you're going for image stabilization, you want one that pairs with your camera because you need the lens stabilization and the in-body IBIS to talk to each other so that they're able to image correct. Because if they don't, you can get weird things as they move the image around and the sensor has to accommodate that. Thanks for joining me. I will see all of you next time.